Hello, Sunday is back with another video and today I'm going to talk about Trifles One Act Play written by Susanna Glasspell and it is from the compulsory English book of grade 11. Okay, let's start with the name of the characters and setting. When you're dealing with the one act play, you need to remember the name of the characters and setting as well. The name of the characters are Mrs. Winnie Wright, George Henderson, County Attorney, Henry Peters, Seraf and husband of Mrs. Peters, Louise Hell, a neighboring farmer of the Wrights, Mrs. Peters, wife of the Seraf, Mrs. Hell, neighbor to the Wrights and wife of Louise Helly. So these are the characters you need to remember from this one act play. Talking about the setting, the setting is abandoned farmhouse of John Wright who gets killed in this one act play and we try to figure out who killed him. And the further setting of the play is a gloomy kitchen and left without having been put in order. On washed pans under the sink, a loaf of bread outside the bread box, a dish towel on the table, are the signs of incomplete work. Okay, that's the setting of the one act play trifles. Now time for plot line. The one act play starts when county attorney George Henderson, the sheriff Henry Peters, his wife Mrs. Peters, the house shows signs of disarray, as if people have left without straightening up after themselves. It is cold, so the men move directly to the wood stove. The women hang back. Henderson invites the women to come closer to the stove to warm themselves. Mrs. Peters declines, speaking for both women. The county attorney briskly moves everyone's attention to their purpose for being there, which is to review the scene of John Wright's murder. He prompts Sir Peters, who immediately begins to record what he has seen. He prompts Sir Peters, who immediately begin to recount what he had seen at the house and how the only thing he had done was to have someone start the fire for them so the house would not be so cold when they arrived. Louis Hell then takes over the story. He had stopped by the house to see if John Wright wanted to go in a shared phone line with him. When he knocked, no one answered. He knocked again and eventually heard someone reply. When he entered, he saw Mrs. Wright sitting in a rocking chair pleating her apron. Hell says she looked odd, like she didn't know what to do next. When Hell asked to see John Wright, Mrs. Wright replied that he could not because her husband was dead. From a rope around the neck, Hell called Halley, the farmer, the other farmer from the village, who had been riding with him. They went upstairs to check. They found Mr. Wright dead upstairs with a rope around his neck. But the whole situation looked wrong somehow. When Hell asked Mrs. Wright what happened, she said she did not know. And that someone must have killed her husband without waking her. Harry wanted to ask more questions, but Hell thought they should go the corner there so Mrs. Wright could tell him a story. Harry brought the coroner back along with the serf. Hell says that's all he knows. Henderson says they should go look at the crime scene. But first, they should inspect the house for any sign of motive, any reason Mrs. Wright might have killed her husband. When they notice the mess in the kitchen, the male make disparaging remark about Mrs. Wright's housekeeping. The women speak for the first time defending her. The county attorney tries to mend fences, praising women for how indispensable they are. The women stay stand and cold, countering that no house would be more cheerful for John Wright being in it. The county attorney says he'd like to address this letter, but for now they should inspect the crime scene upstairs. Once the men disappear upstairs, the women talk more openly. Mrs. Hell starts saying how little she would like men criticizing her kitchen that way. Mrs. Peters defends the men's action at just doing the duty. 
Mrs. Hell allows herself to get ready. But then she starts to notice more things out of place as she looks around. She sees herself in the details she finds as she gathers a few items to take to Mrs. Wright in jail. Hell starts to sit down on Mrs. Wright's rocking chair and then realizes what she's about to do just as she touches it. She stands back up and the empty chair rocks as she watches it. Mrs. Peters goes to the closet in the front room, inviting Mrs. Hal to help her. They get some clothes and notice how cold the room is. This leads Mrs. Hal to share her memories of Mrs. Wright's youth, her isolation and how her life had not worked the way she had wanted it. The talk of how nicely she used to dress leads uh, the conversation to Mrs. Wright's odd request. She wanted them to bring her an apron in jail. They find it hanging behind the door that leads to the stairs. Mrs. Peters gathers it and then quickly closes the door. Mrs. Hell asks Mrs. Peter if she thinks Mrs. Wright killed her husband. Mrs. Peters says she doesn't know and Mrs. Hell states that she does not think Mrs. Wright killed him. After all, she asked for her apron and shawl and was worried about her preserves. Mrs. Peters looks up when she hears the men's footsteps upstairs and then recounts what her husband had said. That the court case is likely to go badly for Mrs. Wright because of a statement that she had not woken up. Something that attorney plans to mock her for during the trial. This leads them to comment on another oddity. How Mr. Wright had not awakened when his killer put the rope around his neck and how strange a way that was to kill someone, especially since Mr. Hell had said there was a gun in the house. The shift to talking about the weakness in the case, the apparent lack of motive. Mrs. Hell says she cannot see any evidence of anger. She sees only incomplete cleaning. She makes a move to finish, then stops commenting on how it seems like sneaking to look through the house. Mrs. Peters protests that the law is the law, and Mrs. Hell reluctantly agrees. Mrs. Hell then suggests Mrs. Peter take off her coat, so she'll be warm when they go outside again. As uh, Mrs. Peters does, she notices that Mrs. Wright was putting a kilt together. Mrs. Hell recognizes it as a long cabin patron and wonders aloud if Mrs. Wright was going to kilt it or just not it. As women discuss uh, the kilt, the men calm down. They hear Mrs. Hell's question and say if Peters mocks the women for it. The men laugh and then go out to inspect the barn. Once they are alone again, Mrs. Hell defends herself and Mrs. Peters saying there is nothing wrong with their focusing on their things while they are waiting for the men. Mrs. Peters defends the men saying they have a lot in their mind. The women then discuss Mrs. Wright's saving, nothing how it started so neat but is now really messy. Mrs. Hell starts to fix it and Mrs. Peters says she should not touch anything. Mrs. Hell wonders why Mrs. Wright was so nervous. As they speculate, they continue to pack up Mrs. Wright's belongings. When Mrs. Hell looks for paper and string to wrap up everything, she finds an empty bird case. She asks Hell, she asks uh, Mrs. Hell if Mrs. Wright had a bird. Mrs. Hell does not know, but she does remember a bird salesman passing through. The memory reminds her of how Mrs. Wright used to sing when she was young and single. Mrs. Peters comments on how strange it seems for a bird to live in the house. Mrs. Hell wonders if the cat got it. And Mrs. Peters says it could not have because they did not have one. Mrs. Wright felt odd about cats. The women look more closely at the case and notice that the door is damaged as if someone had tried it roughly. The women look more closely at the case and notice that the door is damaged, as if someone had treated it roughly. Mrs. Hell admits she does not like the house and they agree it feels lonely. Mrs. Hell says she felt 
Mrs. Hale says she feels guilty over not coming to visit more often. Mrs. Peters reassures her that she did nothing wrong because she had her own house and kids to take care of Mrs. Hale. Steele feels guilty about how isolated the house feels and how little she did to ease that isolation. Mrs. Peters assures her again that it was not her fault. The women shift to talking Mr. Wright. They agree with the town general consensus that he was a good man. But Mrs. Hale adds that he was a hard man, cold like a raw wind. That's why Mrs. Hale suggests when she was younger, Minnie Wright was like a bird herself, pretty and sweet, but shy and nervous. She then steps back to the present, suggesting Mrs. Peters take the kill to jail for Mrs. Wright. Mrs. Wright agrees and starts gathering Mrs. Wright's sewing materials. As they are looking for seeds, they find a dead bird in the box. When they look closely at it, they, their eyes meet and they realize what the dead bird means. They hear the men returning and hide the box under the pieces of kilt. As the men re-enter, the county attorney returns to his earlier joke, asking if the women have decided if Mrs. Wright was going to kill it or not the kilt. Mrs. Hell lies to him, telling him they think the cat killed it. Again, he does not really listen but asks absently if there's a cat. Mrs. Peters joined in the lie, saying it left because cats are superstitious. The county attorney does not answer and instead gathers the sheriff Peters to review the crime scene upstairs. Once the men leave, the women are quiet for a time, don't look at each other, then they start tucking in. They do so reluctantly and uneasily. Mrs. Hell says the pretty box the bird is in shows how much Mrs. Wright liked the dead bird. Mrs. Peters follows with the memory from when she was a young girl and a boy killed her kitten with a hatchet. She loved the kitten so much that she would have hurt him. Mrs. Hell makes the connection between the way Mrs. Wright used to sing but no more with the dead birds suggesting Mr. Wright killed the bird because he would not have liked a thing that sang. Mrs. Peters uh, tries to claim they don't know who killed it, but Mrs. Hell is sure. Mrs. Peters shifts to talking about how horrible the crime was. Mrs. Hell agrees, but as she does, her hand comes to rest on the bird case. Mrs. Peters again denies that they know who killed Mr. Wright, but Mrs. Hell goes on imagining out loud how horrible a completely steel and empty house would be. Mrs. Peters agrees she experienced the loneliness and emptiness when they lived on the frontier and her first child died. The women then pull themselves back to the prison, the duty and the case, but they cannot stay there. Mrs. Hell's mind fills with the memory of young Minnie Foster before she became Mrs. Wright. She blames herself for not visiting Mrs. Wright and calls that a crime. Mrs. Peters tries to deflect this talk, but Mrs. Hale puts Mrs. Peters tries to deflect this talk, but Mrs. Hale pushes on, saying she knows how often women suffer in similar ways. She finally stops herself and seeing the shattered jars of preserve suggests they not tell Mrs. Wright the most of it was spoiled. Mrs. Peters so she agrees by taking the one unbroken jar and wrapping it to take to Mrs. Wright. As she does, she talks in a false voice about how silly they are and how the men would laugh at them for getting so upset over a dead board. Just then, uh, the men come upstairs and as they do, the county attorney says everything is clear about the case except the motive. There's no reason for Mrs. Wright to have done it. The two women lock eyes. Mr. Hell re-enters from outside, letting everyone know he is uh, got horses ready. Sheriff Peters asks if uh, the county attorney wants to inspect the things the women are talking to Mrs. Wright in jail. Yeah.
Henderson laughs, dismissing the idea and the things the women have as not very dangerous. He then suggests Mrs. Peters does not need supervision because, as a serf's wife, she is married to the law. The men move to another room for a moment to inspect the windows. When the women are left alone, they don't speak, but they do look at each other intently. Mrs. Hale looks at the pair place. Mrs. Hale looks at the place where they had uh, hidden uh, the box with the dead bird in it. Mrs. Peters tries to jam the box in a bag, but it does not fit. She starts to take the dead bird out of the bag, but cannot bring herself to touch it. She freezes, but when the door knob starts to turn, indicating the men are returning, Mrs. Hell grabs the box and puts it in her coat pocket. As the men enter, as the men enter, the county attorney tries for one more joke at the women's expense, saying, "At least they learned that Mrs. Wright was not going to kill her swing project, but." was instead going to. He pauses and asks the women again what it's called. Mrs. Hell presses her hand against the pocket with the dead bird in it and says, we call it not it, Mr. Henderson. The play ends with that line. Okay, that was the plot line of trifles. Now time for important questions given on the book. And the first question goes like this. Do you believe that Mrs. Wright killed her husband explain yes i believe mrs wright killed her husband because the canary in the pretty box has had its neck wrong somebody killed him and as per the conversation of mrs hell and uh, mrs peters it was killed by mr wright and mr wright didn't like the bird singing in the house for that matter he killed the bird and it is because Mrs. Wright was so much fond of that singing bird, she killed her husband. So the conversation between Mrs. Peters and Mrs. Hell indicates that she has killed her husband. Do you think Mr. Wright's death would have been uncovered if Mr. Hell had not stopped by the Wright's home? Yes, I think. Mr. Wright's death would have been uncovered later as well, even if Mr. Hell had not stopped by his home because he was a very good person in his uh, community. But I think if it was much later, Mrs. Wright would not have been accused of his murder. The next question, why does Mrs. Hell think that Mrs. Wright's worries about her preserves indicate her innocence? Mrs. Hell thinks that Mrs. Wright is innocent with the implication that no one so focused on trifles such as her fruits, preserves and her apron could be guilty. Mrs. Peters' home seeding experience connects to Mrs. Wright because they both have experienced the same feeling. She agreed that loneliness and emptiness she had experienced in her life is much like the experience Mrs. Wright had with her husband in that abandoned farmhouse. She recalled when she was living with her husband in a front tire, she felt all alone when her first child died. Now time for last question and the question is how do the women's perspectives on men differ? The one act play, the trifles, indicates that there is the different kind of perspectives of men and women. The women ultimately outwit the men and prove their worth. Meanwhile, the men spend all their time looking for evidence because they have forgotten that evidence often consists of little things, especially when no eyewitnesses are involved. So, Mrs. Hell and Peter found the evidence and hid it. The county attorney and Mr. Hill represent opposing sides in the matter of understanding domestic felicity. On the other hand, Henderson assumes that females are solely responsible for the domestic realm and consequently concludes that any lack of chair in the right farmhouse must result from Mrs. Wright's incompetence.
Mrs. Hell resents Henderson's idea because she recognizes that although domesticity has a physical aspect, the greater part comes from the emotional and mental state of people in the household. In her mind, because John Wright lacked the ability to emphasize with his wife and because he made her feel so lonely, he is the one truly responsible for the unhappiness in the household. Henderson keeps promising to return to the subject of the state of the rights marriage, but he never does and thus never comes to understand of your point. So in this way, the perspective between men and women differs in this one act play, Raffles. Okay, now the theme of the play. The theme of the play is gender difference. The most important theme of this one act play is gender difference. That is differences between men and women. The two sexes are distinguished by the roles they play in the society, their physicality, their methods of communication and vital to the plot of the play, their powers of observation. In simple terms, trifles suggest that men tend to be aggressive, brash, rough. In contrast to women, they are more sensitive to the needs of others. The difference that allows Mrs. Peters and Mrs. Hell to find the clues needed to solve the crime, while their husbands miss the same clues. Meanwhile, the women, perhaps sensing the gloom and terror in the house, enter timidly and stand close to each other just inside the door. They are partly identified by the roles their husband play. An important detail is they are always referred to by their married names only and no first name are used. As the investigation commences, the main sick, obvious clues that might suggest a motive for the crime, perhaps indications of alcoholism or physical abuse, Henderson overlooks a small but significant clues that tell the real story. He ignores Louise who tells him that Joe never seemed to care what his wife wanted and dismisses the mess in the kitchen as the result of sooty housekeeping. When the women rise to Minnie's defense, he even mocks them for simply trying to be loyal to your sex. Okay, another theme is isolation. The devastating effects of isolation, especially on women, is another theme of the play. The men seem better suited to the loneliness and isolation of rural farming. John Wright, for example, is des described as a hardworking farmer who kept to himself. He did not share a telephone line and no one other than his wife knew him very well. The women, on the other hand, are deeply affected by isolation. Mrs. Peters remembers with dread when she and her husband were homesteading in the Dakota countryside and her only child died, leaving her alone in the house all day while her husband was out working the farm. Mrs. Hill, who has several children of her own, imagines how terrible it would be to have to live in an empty house like many. So now let's talk about the symbol the play includes. The case is one of the symbols and it represents the house itself of Mr. Wright and Mrs. Wright. Mrs. Wright was trapped in a marriage like the bird was trapped in a case. The bird case shows that the bird case represents how Mrs. Wright was trapped in a marriage and could not escape it. The bird door is broken which represents a broken marriage to Mrs. Wright escaping her marriage from Mr. Wright. When the door is open, it allows Mrs. Wright to become a free woman. Another symbol is bird. It represents Mrs. Wright. She was so lovely, yet so shy. Mrs. Hell even explained to Mrs. Peter that Mrs. Wright was kind of like a bird herself, real sweet and pretty, but kind of timid and fluttery. When Mrs. Wright was Mini Foster, she sang in one of the town girls' singing choir, which represents the bird. Since the birds used to sing beautifully like Mini, the bird represents Mini Foster. In other words, Mrs. Wright. The another symbol is the kitchen. And it is a abandoned kitchen in the farmhouse, like uh, Mrs. Wright, who had been abandoned by her husband. And rope. The rope symbolizes death and destruction. When Mr. Wright was killed, he was choked to death with the rope. The same way Mrs. Wright was killed, so was Mrs. Wright's bird. 
the death of Mr. Wright was Mrs. Wright's way of starting a new life. Okay, that's all in this video. I hope you liked it. If you like it, don't forget to share and subscribe to the channel. Happy learning!